Elder A has partnered with Atlassian Jira, the number one software development tool used by Agile teams. The Elder A tool suite integration with Jira exchange data bidirectionally to support your Agile best practices, as the integration enables a Scrum or Kanban workflow for the software validation and verification of real-time embedded systems, reducing the cost of testing and improving code quality, safety, and security. What you're looking at here is the Tino Lighting System Project Dashboard. Here I can see the issues that have been assigned to me and the activities that are taking place. One other thing to point out is the address of this particular JIRA instance, which I'll be using later to connect to through the LDRA tool suite. Now let's take a look at the projects that exist. We see that we have only one project and it's a software type of project. By diving into the project, we have access to all the issues. Some of these are requirements, some of these are test cases, and we even have some that are defects. Now, to better perform requirements and test management in JIRA, add-ons exist just for that purpose. Let me show you the Atlassian Marketplace. This is the one-stop shop for hundreds of apps that custom fit software to the needs of every team. Now, I'm actually using this particular one for this demo the requirements and test management for JIRA. Now going back to my issues list, the add-on actually created this particular icon with RTM for requirements traceability management. And when I click on it, it takes me to that particular view. Here I can add requirements of various types, and you can see that I've created folders as well to organize those requirements into my system level requirements that have been decomposed into my high-level requirements and further decomposed into my low-level software requirements. I can also take a look at one of these requirements and see the information it contains. One of the interesting one is the relations. I can see that it has that relation to the TLS2, where it decomposes to. The TLS2 further has relations back up to the high-level and down to an actual test case where you can see that it's verified by. JIRA also offers traceability reports. Let's take a look at one of these. We can see here the traceability between the system requirements and the high level requirements within these projects. We can also see here that the system requirements does not have all its requirements covered. We're at 93%. And actually, better yet, as we scroll down, we can actually see that the TLS 13 has no mapping to a high-level requirement, showing us that there are holes in our requirements decomposition. Now, let's go back. And basically, all of these requirements that we see here, with their traceability links and the test cases that verify the requirements, will be replicated in the LDRA tool suite, where traceability down to the code can be established and these test cases can be realized and executed. I'll show this in the LDRA integration part of the demo. This add-on also gives me a view into all the test cases and it gives me the view into defects that exist against the code. There are also other options like test plans and test executions, but what's really interesting is a simple workflow. So let's go ahead and take a look at our backlog. Here I have my backlog of issues and I have an active sprint. I'm gonna go ahead and assign the TLS7 issue into this particular sprint and that's a simple drag and drop. I'm going to go ahead and confirm that. Now going back to my issues, I want to take a look at all the details of this particular test case. I can see here that it's now been assigned to the sprint and it's on my to-do, but in fact what I'm going to do is I'm going to now assign it as in progress. The other important field here is the verified field. This is the field that LDRA is going to use to inform JIRA that the test case has been executed and verified. Okay, so let's now move on to the LDRA part of the demo. 
This is TB Manager, which is part of the LDRA tool suite. And here's where we're going to be bringing in the requirements and the test cases from Jira. Now, this project is almost empty because I've created some of these groups to house my high level, low level requirements and test cases for high level and low level requirements. And I've done this to expedite the demo as their settings already been set. But let me show you how this is created. We're going to do the group to house my system level requirements see it here and we could do this also graphically through the unit view I'm gonna right click and add the missing group system level requirement and add also a relationship just to show the dependencies between my requirements we can now also import from Jira and these are requirements not test cases so select requirements and let's connect to the instance I have a connection already but let's take a look to see how that was constructed. The connection name, you can give it any name, the server instance address, your login credentials. I've also decided to save my credentials and test connection. We can see that it's successful, so I'm going to go ahead now and load the projects. Well, there's only one project, which is the tunnel lighting system. So let's go ahead and load the issue types. There's various issue types. But the one that we are interested in is the system requirements. Let's go ahead and load all those items from the project that are of that type. So we have these columns, and these columns contain information that we can now map to the LDRA counterparts. For example, the summary has been mapped to the requirement name. Links here are the requirement references, which there aren't any, but that's the linkage. And then the key, which is unique requirement number. And we also have the description, which is mapped to the requirement body. Now, you may have more columns or more data that you want to link in. One of the ones that I want to be bringing in is the verified. So, for example, I can right click on it and map it to the requirement status. And we see here at the bottom. One additional one I want to bring in is the requirement type. There it is, issue type, right click and map it to the requirement type. These are all system requirements. So what I can do is I can hit a preview and it shows me what I'm gonna be bringing in. Requirement number, name, body, there's no outgoing links, the requirement type, and the requirement status. That looks great. But let's say I wanted to customize this further. Say the requirement name, well, what I could do here on the bottom right, I can click on name and give it my own special name. Now when I hit the preview, you can see that it's been overwritten. All right, so let me clear that out. And you have the option, for example, if you wanted to bring priority, you can right click and create a new custom attribute to be mapped as part of the LDRA types. All right, the next thing I'm gonna do is the requirement type is, these are system requirements, so I'm gonna leave it as system. But you can see my options. I'm gonna now just import, here are, 14 of them. Now the graphics have been updated and we can actually look at this through the default view. You can see my system level requirements. Now let's go ahead and bring in the high level requirements, which is the next level of decomposition. Import from Jira. All my settings have been set. These are high level requirements and I'm going to hit the import. There they are. You can see the nesting that has taken place. Now I'm going to import my low-level requirements. Low-level, import, hit OK. And we have another level of nesting. Perfect. All that traceability has been mapped. Now let's bring in the test cases. Now for test cases, we definitely want to map the verified field with the test case status. Commonly, you want to update that field after you've realized the test case executed and it's all passed. And we'll step you through that. Now, the test case type is important because here is where we tell LDRA what type of test case to realize, whether it's a quality review type of test case, system test case, code coverage, unit test, and so on and so forth. For this case, I'm going to do code review and hit the import. We can see that it brought in and placed it in the appropriate place based on the dependencies. Now let's bring in the low level requirements. These are unit tests. And we see here that we have 
another set of test cases brought in with a different icon because it's a different type of test case. All right, let's start doing some mapping. So let's bring in the code. We can do a source file, many files from a project, from a make file, from a previous LDRA test case file. I'm gonna keep it simple. We'll bring in source code. LAMP CPP is what I want. You can see it brought it in. And now I have the option to simply drag and drop. So this set lumens, I'm gonna click, drag, and map it to the test case. Now I can also map it to the requirement up above. And I can map the whole file, for example, to this whole coding standard test case. Now we can look at some of this traceability through the traceability from requirements to code. I want the traceability starting from my system level requirements so this particular group, and see it trickle down all the way to the code. There it is. I can click on it and it highlights that traceability. All right, let's go ahead and realize this test case. By uh, simply right-clicking on it, we can create the test case. Launch TB run. It's going to create a constructor for us. Hit continue. And now let's execute that constructor to make sure that the framework it created is all working. So yes, we received the pass. I'm gonna now go ahead and create a single test case, or I could create different types of test case, but it's based on the instructions of what you need to do. So for example, going back to our JIRA for this test case, we have instructions here, step one and step two. Test for when the lamp is brightest and variable lumens required is zero with expect the result of one. After that is to perform this automated test code generation. All right, let's go ahead and do that. Going back, let's set lumens required to zero. Lamp ID to brightest with an output of one. Now let's go ahead and execute that. Yes, that passed, perfect. Let's move on to the next step, which is the extreme test. And I really like this because it'll create test cases based on what you've selected here. All right, I'm gonna do a simple run standard extreme test. Creates multiple test cases for me automatically. And we can see that they've all passed. Okay, when I close this, it publishes the results and we'll see here in HTML that got created. And we also see that these little notches are now green. They're no longer red, which means it's a pass. All right, let's take a look at the HTML report. We have now proof that this was executed on a particular date and time. All right, let's go back. And now how do we update JIRA? Okay, with this test case information, let's go to the test cases. We see here that it's at the bottom. All right, so if you right click and select JIRA export to JIRA, we can go ahead and export only what we are interested in, which is this particular TLS 7. I'm gonna hit okay. So from this view, we actually have the option to decide what it is that we want to export based on the mappings that we've created. So if we go here to write attributes, we see those fields and I could decide to update the verified field by clicking and selecting right. If I had changed the test case description, I could also change it here and it would update that information in JIRA. All right, so I'm gonna hit okay and I'm gonna now start the export. The field has been updated. So let's go ahead, close this and verify that it has. So going to JIRA, we can see that it says not verified but is that really the case? Well, we need to really refresh this view. So I'm gonna refresh. And now it says verified. Perfect. This particular issue is no longer in progress. It has now been completed. So I'm gonna mark it as done. All right, let's take a look at our backlog. We see that it's been crossed out. And if we look at the active sprints, it's now in the done column. Okay, well, this is all that I wanted to show for this demo. I hope that it has been very informative. And if you want to contact us, you can visit us at LDRA.com or send us an email at info at LDRA.com and you can find us on Twitter and Facebook.